our baptism, God desires to untrouble our hearts. Through the water and the word, God dwells with us. In our baptism, you are our way, and we receive your truth and your light. We may come to you, but in our baptism, you came to us. Baptism is one of your greatest works. Help us to do great works of love, wet in your word, soaked by your love. We ask all of this in the name of the one who showed us the Father. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. God's word coming to us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven 
and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. God's word coming to us. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to take you to myself, so that where I am, there you will may be also. And you know the way of the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you will know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Really, truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me of for anything, I will do it. God's word coming to us. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to Time with Children. This week's gospel is from the Gospel of John. And many of the verses that we read over and over in the Bible kind of get nicknames. And the nickname for this text this week is God's house. In this uh, story, Jesus says that he's going to go and prepare a place for us at God's house. And uh, the most important part of this Bible text for us is that Jesus welcomes us, all of us, right? Um, and I'm wondering if you guys have ever welcomed anyone into your home. Um, have you ever prepared your house to have guests and to welcome people, maybe for dinner or to stay for a little while? What kinds of things do we do to prepare to have people in our home? I know one of the things that we do when we're preparing to have people in our home is we clean. 
um, probably not everyone's favorite part of preparing for guests, but we definitely clean when people are gonna come over. The other thing that we do is we prepare a snack or a meal. And I picked an avocado because I really like to prepare guacamole for people. Uh, it's one of the things I like to make. Uh, so maybe it's a snack like chips and guac, or maybe you're preparing a big fancy meal, but it's fun to prepare food when you have guests over. Another thing um, that we do when we're preparing to have guests is we might set up the table. Maybe we just put a candle on the table or maybe it's a fancy meal. Like these are some of the linens that we use for Christmas at our house and they're a little more fancy, um, but we prepare the table to have guests over and to be together. What are some other things that you do in your house to welcome people? Do you expect that when people come over that they're dressed a certain kind of way or that they're super happy and smiling the entire time that they're at your house? Of course not. I don't either. I try to tell people that when they come over they should just come as they are. And Jesus welcomes us as we are too. Jesus welcomes us unconditionally, which means no matter what. When Jesus is talking to his disciples in our story today, he's reminding them of how much he loves them and all of the things that he has done for them and will do for them. It is so easy to forget about how much Jesus loves us and to forget about Jesus. We have so many things in our mind, things that we're doing. So this week, I want to encourage you that when you walk by your front door or you even just see your front door, that you remember and you forget your distractions and you remember that Jesus welcomes you and loves you. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be dressed a kind of way. You don't have to be smiling all the time. Just know that Jesus opens that door and loves you no matter what. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for welcoming us and loving us. Sometimes we forget about all that you have done and other times we are just in a bad mood, but you love us anyway. Wow. Help us to remember your love and this week, help us to find ways to remind others of your no matter what love too. Amen. What are we to do brothers and sisters? What are we to do with our troubled and unsatisfied hearts? What are we to do when we are so confused and God seems so confusing? What are we to do when we ask and do not receive, when we seek and we do not find, and we knock and the door just remains closed? What are we to do when Jesus says, believe me, and, uh, well, we say we wish we could? What are we to do when Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, and our response is, what is truth? And what are we to do, and how are we supposed to lead when we don't know where you are going, and we only know where we've been? There are days. There are days when I think it's my job to answer all these questions. And there are days that I am the one that has all these questions. There are days in which the troubled and unsatisfied heart seems to fill all voids and empty spaces of faith. It gets filled with all this worry and despair. Jesus, where are you going? And Jesus, where are we going? And if you are the way, the truth, and the life, but I am lost, confused, and dying, where are you then? Is there a place for me where you are? God, is, is, is there room? Is, is there room for me and all my questions, God? Is there room for me and all my confusion, in who you are, God. 
The struggle with questions of faith, even in the Bible, is that Jesus doesn't really answer them. And when I say Jesus doesn't really answer our questions, I mean Jesus answers our questions with questions and not really solutions. Jesus hardly ever keeps it simple and straightforward. To most of our questions, Jesus comes to us in these two ways, with more questions or a promise. Now Jesus, when he answers a question with a question or a story, the assumption is, is that the answer of the question lies within us or in between the lines of the story. The answer is found in the searching, not the finding. The answer is found in the search and not the outcome. The answer is always part mystery and all hope. In today's passage, our questions are answered by a promise. And when a question is answered with a promise, it is faith in that promise that we find our answers. When we pray, it is in faith that we believe God will listen. And for that, that is the promise. Baptism and Holy Communion in and of themselves are just water, wine, and bread. But in the promise, in the believing of the promise, we receive in them and we are changed. Alone, they don't do what they're supposed to do. But trusting in the promise of our baptism and the gift of communion, our questions are transformed not into answers, but life-giving hope. Sometimes God's response to our questions is not an answer, but a hope. In faith, we trust in that hope. Our, we trust in that hope above our questions and doubt. Not that our questions and doubt ever disappear. We end up trusting hope and having faith above and beyond our questions and our fears. In a way, we hope and faith and in our hope and faith, it overpowers our questions and our fears. And so, with God, all our questions and, and struggles. There is room for that. What about our troubled and unsatisfied hearts? <laughs> There's room for that. So what about our confusion? There's room for that. So what if you do not receive, seek, and find? There is room for that. What if Jesus, when, what if Jesus, when he says to us, believe me, and we wish we could? There is room for that. What if I don't know what the truth is? There is room for that. What if we, we don't know where we're going? There's room for that. And if I don't feel worthy, there is room for that. And what if every answer makes more questions? There, there is room, room for, for that. that. For in Christ, we are promised a God with a big, big house, with lots of room, with a big, big table, with lots of food, and a big yard where we can run and play. It's a house that's not full of answers, but it's a full of promise. The promise that God in Jesus Christ is with us and holds our questions and our troubled and unsatisfied hearts close to him. It is a house full of hope. Hope that our future is with God and in God's dwelling. It is a house full of grace. A grace that surpasses passes our doubts and our fears and our darkest questions. And this, my friends, this, my family of God, is our Father's house. One, two, one, two, three. Call your home. I don't know where you eat your meals or where you 
talk on the phone I don't know if you gotta cook a butler or a maid I don't know where you got a yard with a hammock in the shade yeah. I don't know if you got some shelter, say a place to hide I don't know if you live with friends in whom you can confide confess our faith found in a new creed, a partner creed with the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. 
We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice, resist evil, to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us and we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mother in God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for the new congregations and those in redevelopment. We pray for congregations that this pandemic has threatened their vibrancy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety, for hospital workers and other first responders. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing and rest, Help those whose hearts are heavy and weighted down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Today, we especially pray for Robin Weinstein and Sarah DeKuyper, and all those having treatments for cancer. We also pray for Linda, Aloha, Henry, Ellen, Amy, Mary, Father John, Robin, Sarah, Linda, Jean, Richard, Matthew, Chad, Elaine, Trish, Karen, Shirley, Janice, Lucille, Lillian, Eleanor, Carl, Andrew, Stephen, Jeff, and Chuck. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing God. We pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place for all whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share peace with the people in our household. And it has been our pattern in our, in our videos to share a moment of peace by a deep breath. So let us breathe together. Amen. As a resurrected people yearning to pray with hope, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way. May God go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, 
above you to watch over you, within you to give you peace, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Thank you.